Hello again. In this video I'm going to take you through the steps of installing your own roof flushings. These apron flushings are probably the most used type of flushing in roofing and can be utilised in amongst other places tiled roofs, slate roofs, flat roofs, conservatories and lean-tos and a whole host of other situations. I will also be showing you how to rake out the mortar from brickwork if you're doing a brand new install of lead flashings or how to remove old lead flashing and fit brand new flashings as a full replacement. Firstly, if you're fitting flashing where there aren't any currently, you will need to remove the mortar on a brickwork course. Ideally at a height of 150mm or 6 inches above the roof although in areas that are not exposed to high volume of direct weather this can be reduced to 75 millimeters or 3 inches. If you're chasing out a mortar course you will need a small angle grinder fitted with a diamond tipped mortar raking disc. Here I have removed the safety guard and dust extraction so you can see the process clearly. This is for the benefit of the video, do not do this yourself and always wear eye protection and a dust mask. Now it's just a matter of removing all the required mortar from the entire run of your flashings. Now I know some people recommend raking out the mortar to a depth of 25 millimeters or more but in my experience this can weaken the strength of the bricks especially above lintels or around windows Personally, I aim for a depth of around 15 to 20 millimetres, and I've had no problems with this. If you're removing old lead flashings, as I am in this case, I find picking out the loose mortar by getting behind it with an old slotted screwdriver can be a very effective dust-free method. This will also allow you to leave out any stubborn lead chocks that may be stuck inside the chase. Once your chase is cleared of mortar and chocks, Thoroughly dust the chase to remove any last bits of debris or dust. Now it's time to measure the size of your lead flashings, which in this case will be three measurements. One, the chase depth. Two, the drop of the wall flashing. And three, the overlap onto the roof below. If you're creating a simple overflashing onto a flat roof upstand like this one, no overlap onto the roof is necessary so you don't have to bother with the third overlap measurement. In this example there are three measurements to think of. Chase depth and wall drop are easy to measure. Previously the overlap onto the tile was too short at 75 millimeters. The recommended overlap is 150 millimeters or 6 inches onto a roof. But here I will be installing an overlap of about 125 millimetres or 5 inches. This is simply because aesthetically it will look nicer on these small plain tiles. And combined with the steep roof and sheltered location there's no chance of rain driving underneath the flashings to cause a leak later on. Next on the floor I'll simply cut a section of milled lead around 1.2 metres or 4 feet in length much longer than this and the expansion and contraction in a long piece of lead can cause it to split prematurely and ruin the flashings in later life. Ok, so now we've got the lead cut to length, let's bend it into shape. Now if you've got lead dressing tools you can use them, but I'm going to show you how to do it without any specialist tools at all. After tapping the lead nice and flat with a piece of timber, we can set the depth of the lead into the chase. Simply position the lead over a sharp angle of some sort. Here I'm using a straight piece of roofing batten and the lead is protruding over the edge by the amount of chase depth that I require. It's then just a matter of working up and down with a standard claw hammer. Another technique is to trap the lead between two straight roofing buttons and use a small off cut of batten as a makeshift lead dresser. When you're happy with the result, fold the lead by hand at the desired drop and overlap point. Again, nothing more technical than a roofing button is needed. And there you go, done. Just before I start fitting the flashing that I've just bent into shape, 
noticed I've made some lead straps which are fixed into the nail holes of the tiles. This is an important step that unfortunately gets missed out. Here I've spaced two straps to every 1.2 meter length of flashing and their purpose in this case is to stop gravity pulling on the lead flashings over the years and putting excess force on the fixings that we will be using later on. Another function is to stop wind lift in exposed areas when you could even upgrade to a stainless steel strapping. As a bonus they also hold down the flashings in place like this so you can adjust the lead without worry of it slipping or falling off the roof. When fitting your lead flashings always try to fit the flashing away from the line of sight. Here I'll be starting on the left and I will be adding them sequentially like this. This just ensures that when a visitor or your customer approaches from for instance the street or an entrance that no visible overlaps in the lead can be seen with the naked eye. It's just a way of making the finished job as neat as possible. Now I've fitted the second lead flashing and dropped it into place. Overlap the lead sections a minimum of 100 millimeters or 4 inches. Next we can hammer in some fixings into the chase to trap the lead work between the two faces of the brick. The traditional way is to use lead chocks made from rolled up scrap lead. Cut yourself a strip of lead like this, roll it up so it's slightly bigger than the gap you will be hammering it into and strike one edge of it to create a slight wedge shape like this. It doesn't matter if you hammer them in end on or widthways, as long as you get the size right the job will be the same. And this is how to drive them in. Repeat this process about every 450 millimeters or 18 inches or so so that the entire length of the flashings are fully fixed and if you're on a very long run of lead flashings try securing them with hull clips or lead flashing clips instead. These are machine made and obviously a lot quicker to fix and can save considerable time on a very long run. Next beat your new lead flashing flat to the wall and tiles. This can be done by hammering the lead work gently with a small off cut of roofing batten or timber if you don't have any lead dressing tools. It's basically just a matter of not leaving hammer head impacts in the face of your nice new lead work. Now fold over, cut and tap down the lead straps that you fixed earlier. On any joins in the lead that do not coincide with the strap you can mark and cut the lead like this. This helps to stop wind lift. Alternatively, you can combine a lead strap and the overlap and kill two birds with one stone. If your roof has edges like this one, the lead work must protrude further than the end of the roof. The angle is then cut into the lead and the remaining lead simply beaten over the verge of the roof. Here, it just wraps around and grabs the underneath of the tiles. This lead beating can be done again with a lead dressing tool or if you haven't got one with the bottom of a hammer. And again if you have profile tiles like these the very base of the handle of a hammer is a good alternative to lead dressing tools if you don't have them. A few light taps on the leading edges and this will make for a very neat job. We're now ready to point up the chase with mortar or seal it with a lead chase sealing product if you prefer. At this stage I like to gently tap down the lead work with the end of a bolster. I found that not only does it firmly position the lead onto the brickwork surface but also the light indentations made in the top surface of the lead help to provide a key for the mortar to bond to. This will help stop the mortar from losing its grip on the lead in future years and falling down the roof. Next comes the pointing up and apart from anything else this can be the number one cause of a leak if you get this wrong. Make sure that you get the mortar all the way back inside the chase. Too often the pointing isn't pushed in all the way back resulting in the loose and leaking mortar. Here you can see I try to do this as a two stage process. 
my first run gets the mortar all the way back in and the second fills and finishes the joint. When you've finished, simply wipe off anything that you've got on the face of the lead with the rag or the back of a glove. Finally, finish the flashings by carefully rubbing patination oil into the lead to stop the white streaking or carbonisation that can ruin the look of the flashings. Well, that's the basics of how to install your own lead flashings. Look out for my other guides to follow shortly on step flashing to roof tiles and step flashing for slates. I hope this video has helped in some way. Thanks for watching.